Am I right in saying that if you install these and use these properly, yep. that I think I've seen it, you've suggested that there can be an energy saving of about 25%. I, I can, off the top of my head, I can think of three sites that we've already installed. The first site had 31%, the second site had 34%, and the, the other site, dependent upon the application, had up 55% energy saving. Hello and welcome to another CF Tech Talking podcast. Um, you've always got me and Dave here. Dave, yeah, you're we're here, sort of fixtures. Yeah. We just yeah. sit in the cupboard, don't we're we? Waiting. Here. Yeah. Uh, we are. <laughs> we are joined this time with a fantastic guest from MK. It's, but it's a Neil. But it's a different Neil. Look. Different Neil. It's Unless he's Neil. grown a beard since we last saw him. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm not Neil Bush. Neil Bush was here a little while ago. I, I'm Neil Brown. Neil. Okay, Neil. Can you tell us just what it is you do over at MK, please? Yeah. Pleased to meet you, gentlemen. Um, my role is an offering manager. So. That used to be called a product manager. So I've got a range of products within the MK portfolio that I look after from cradle to grave. Uh, uh, an offering. All oh, right. So offering, an offering man. of offering products. Man. I get it. Oh, I see what they've done there. Uh, now, today you've joined us because our last podcast with MK, Dave, we spoke about the sockets that they were doing and that's the screwless technology yeah. in the back. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. We loved but, it. But Neil alluded, didn't he? Yes. He alluded to the new connected sockets. And is this what you've got? For Neil alluded to this beast, I think. This is our <laughs> this is our connected power socket. Right. So that's what I'm here to talk to you today about. So can, for those looking on YouTube, you can see this actual device. And I'll be straight up for you. Those of you who are listening to this on any podcast, it's a socket. <laughs> well, it's a socket. The only thing I notice is obviously different. You've not got rocker switches, have we? Absolutely, yeah. So the, the two switches where you would have the rocker switches for each side mm -hmm. are panels with an LED on them. So tell us what, Yeah, what's you've on. got retractive switches. So th this forms part of a solution. So the intent of this socket, because it is a socket, as you mentioned, it's completely retrofitable into an existing installation, uses exactly the same wiring, exactly the same back box. So it fits in a 25 box? Yep, so you've got a socket there, around about 16, 17 mil deep, yeah. with a whole host of electronics built into it. Now, the reason, as you mentioned there, so we've got retractive sockets, switches, I'm sorry, you means you can control it at the socket, you can use it like a normal socket, mm. or you can link it into a host system, a BMS system, buildage management system. So you've got the this capability. Is the, this is the smart bit, is it? This is, Absolutely. This, is this where you're calling it the connected socket because it has that ability to connect into an existing or new BMS? Absolutely. An existing or new BMS or a form of controller. It doesn't need to be an existing building management system. It could be a controller that you interface into. So you have the capability then of controlling your loads around the around the commercial building so is, is it commercially led are you suggesting that this is for commercial or industrial installations 100 percent, because of the capability to interlink into some sort of host system we've deliberately steered away from the residential market ah. now there's a, you can find a number of sockets out on the market that are residentially focused they're controlled by an app yeah the the real primary driver of that sort of that sort of capability is around comfort and convenience. Yep. With this, we're very much commercially focused, where we as MK are really strong, where our partners in Honeywell Trend are really strong as well. So we're focusing on those commercial verticals. What Trend? What's Trend, Neil? Um, Trend's a, a BMS brand within Honeywell, the same as uh, MKR. We're both part of Honeywell Building Technologies. Okay, so, so Trend is a building management system. Out there. So... Does that mean that this socket will only work with Trend? No, the, the way that the socket works, without going into the capability, because we'll come on to that in a minute, I'm sure. <laughs> so the socket works um, using an RF capability, a mesh capability. That's the reason it can be connected with an existing installation, because there's no need for additional wiring. So it's got an RF capability that works into this unit, which, which is called a hub. So a hub is retrofitable into a full ceiling somewhere like this. 50 sockets... 100 outlets go into a hub. That hub then uses a technology called BACnet, completely standard technology, and that technology goes into, into the trend building management system. So, so in, the, in this hub then... So the hub is a, a very small box, isn't it? So 10, 15 centimetres square. It is, square. yep. 
about three centimetres deep. Mm -hmm. So how far away can that be from any of the sockets? Okay, the, these are mesh-based sockets, as I've alluded to. So the distance from the first socket to the hub needs to be within 25 metres. Uh -huh. You can then okay. daisy-chain further sockets up to 25 metres away. So in reality, you can get a distance of approaching 100 metres from your furthest socket into the hub. Oh. Because it uses those in between the last and the hub yep. to connect itself to continue that signal no, across. Okay. Yeah. Just wi winding very slightly back to the back net capability. You know, we are going to market, we've gone to market initially with Trend. Now, the reason we've gone with Trend is we've developed a whole range of dashboards that work out of the box with the Trend IQ Vision system, its building management system. So the system integrator who would install the building management system does very little work to make it function with the Trend system. It will work using BACnet with other people's building management systems, but the system integrator there would need to, to do a little bit more work yeah. to generate those mapping across all the functionality. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're saying then that this then gets its signals to switch on, switch off or whatever. Mm -hmm wirelessly via an RF signal that comes from the gateway. Absolutely. It's all, it's all fed from the building management system into the hub gateway, and then it goes out to the sockets from that point of view. So each socket's its own location, is it? Yeah, absolutely. So the power-saving element that we're looking at is really how they're programmed, when they're programmed to come on and off, if it, to stop overnight uses, that sort of thing? Yeah, th there's right? a number of ways that we can deliver savings for the end customer. I, I alluded to a minute ago a number of residential products that are focused on some comfort and convenience. This is very much focused on CO2 and energy reduction. Mm. Now, within a commercial building, you will find somewhere between 25 and up to 50% of the energy in that commercial building. If it's well managed, if it's got a BMS in there already, you'll find up to 50% of that energy being used with plug loads, so things that are plugged into the building. That's, I never knew that. Yeah, uh, now, now, one thing I did know, however, through looking at your research that some of you have done, okay. it, I think I might be right here, you can correct me. Am I right in saying that if you install these and use these properly, yep. that I think I've seen it, you're suggesting that there can be an energy saving of about 25%. Um, I, I can, off the top of my head, I can think of three sites that we've already installed. The first site had 31%, the second site had 34%, and the, the other site, dependent upon the application, had up 55% energy saving. Oh, that's huge, Dramatic. Now, was that because they were leaving stuff on overnight, they were using stuff when it wasn't required? Is that, is that what the saving is? There's a number of ways of, of looking at the savings that this, this product can achieve. If you think about the, the problems that, a, that an energy manager would have in a commercial building, or indeed a facilities manager, the only way that they can really address plug loads being left on is to either go around individually yeah. or to yeah. put signage up, and we know that no one takes any notice of that. <laughs> so you will find um, sockets being left on 24-7, 365 days a year. Yep. I dread to think how much energy was lost due to COVID in offices just oh, being Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You Absolutely. imagine that. Everyone just went home one Friday and never went back on a Monday. <laughs> just left their screens on for two years. <laughs> so, so absolutely, you can you can schedule things to turn off, you know, at whatever time the end user wants them to do via the building management system and turn them on again in the morning. Am I right, though, in thinking that you can also limit the amount of power available at the socket? You, you can. Um there's something I just want to talk about um, with regard to scheduling. Okay, let's you, stay there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. just stay there very, very quickly. You can schedule things to turn off, and you can schedule them to turn back on in the morning. Mm. But, you know, like me, I'm only in the office a few days a week. So my desk, I, I turn it off at e of an evening automatically, but I don't turn it on in the morning automatically. I go up and press the switch, press that retractive rocker, because you can still use it as a normal socket. So you can turn things off, and yeah. there's a manual intervention there to turn them on. So I could override the scheduling by touching these rockers? If the building management system wants you, you to do, do so. Oh, this is Big Brother taking <laughs> yeah, care of, right. isn't it? If Big Brother lets you do it, you can do it, right. And then when you do that, does yep. it default to an on for an hour or something, and then go off again? Or Completely free. It depends how you, how you schedule it. That's clever. You know, we, we've seen applications in hospitals where... Uh, you, ha you have cleaner sockets, which, which are locked on with, with, uh, with keys. Yep. These sockets, you can put them into four states. You can leave them on and off so they're, they're floating so the user can use them. Or you can lock them. So you lock them in a condition where they're on, or you lock them in a condition where they're off. 
So the buttons don't mean anything then? Uh, absolutely. Oh, so if they were locked off, you yeah. wouldn't be able to override it? Absolutely. Oh, okay. But that, that's got really powerful use cases. Going back to what you asked a second ago about, about saving energy, you can detect... Um, you can detect the. Uh, you can set each outlet, not sockets here. Each outlet. So you've got oh, two outlets. Two on each. Yep. Okay. So you can de- you can set each outlet to have uh, power levels. So you can set a power level. It may be at two kilowatts. So if someone plugs in a fan heater, mm-hmm. yeah. you can automatically shut that socket down, or you really? can get you can get an alert via the BMS. Oh, this, is this is the bit I'd heard about. I was excited is about that. Yeah. This is the because the I'll, right. I'll so when Brian now. and accounts puts his yeah, fan heat. That's yeah. what I was going to say. So <laughs> I, the amount of offices that I've been into, yep. and you go in mainly through the pat testing jobs I used to get in the past. You go into these, and all of a sudden you get start calling about disconnecting all the computers from the uh, floor boxes. The amount of fan haters that you would come yep, across yep, where people are sticking them yep, under their desk. Yep. This would detect that that type of load is trying to be plugged in and not allow it. You, you can allow it. You oh, can send an alert. You can send an email message. This is brilliant. You could shut it down after a period of You get a warning. Time. You get one yeah. warning and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. A great use case going the other way that we found in the gymnasium was... Lots of equipment. They all have these these fancy dashboards on, so you can see what's happening. I wouldn't, wouldn't know, mate. Gym equipment. <laughs> it's a gym. It's called. Oh, right, okay. People go there to exercise. Oh, okay. You must have seen them go in. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Gyms are nowadays twenty four seven operation, but the amount of time that the the equipment's actually being used is insignificant. So you can detect when it falls below a certain level, opposed to going above a certain level. So the machine that's there sitting on standby, you can shut it off from standby. Now these sockets have no. energy power, energy usage of less than uh, less than uh, half a watt, so you can shut equipment off from standby with this. Device. That's mm-hmm. clever, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So you're scheduling things, so you're saving overnight. You're saving the energy usage of a fan heater, so if it goes above a certain level, and you're also saving it if it goes below a certain level. You can turn things off from standby. And presumably, you can use information from these to monitor. The installation to find out what's being used where? You, you uh, absolutely. You can the, interrogate either through trend or from other bits, can you? Yeah. You can. The, the whole beauty of this is you get insights over the electrical usage throughout your building and they're presented to you in the format that you want on a dashboard. You can compare one one room to another room. You can compare pieces of equipment. You can group things together so you <laughs> can see all of your vending machines on one group or you can see them individually. We, we had another one of our installations identified a printer that was using far too much energy. They were comparing similar printers across their installation, and they identified one that, that was basically going out of the realms of being usable. It was just using too much energy. Mm-hmm. That was identified, pinpointed, and replaced. <sighs> See, they, they, Very powerful, they, isn't it, when you yeah. start to go down to that level of detail? Well, the, for yeah. duty holders as well, they would start to see things going into overload where they're starting to fail, yeah. and that would yeah. highlight on yeah. the readings that they're getting. So they could say, there's something not quite right. Send someone to look at a bit of kit that is in service, they either do the pat test on it or they actually take it out of service at that point. Uh, uh, completely. Yeah, Presumably totally. you still use traditional circuit protection methods or, or can the system close down if there's an overload? Will it actually close the, the socket the individual, The individual socket can close down if there was an overload so you can set your, your limits to that. The other element that's really powerful with regard to this socket that we've I don't think anyone's ever done before. There's a lot in here that people haven't done before, but something that's, that's a really great feature is every socket has a thermocouple array within it. So it can actually monitor the internal temperature of that socket. So if for whatever reason the socket's becoming loose, maybe the connections have worked loose, as they do, bring in <laughs> rapid fix. Yeah. But if the, if the connections work loose and the spark's being generated and there's heat being built up, you can automatically shut that socket down. So you well, can prevent the state. You've got that, but you've also got that the simple thermal overload, haven't you? Absolutely. Just drawing yeah. too much current, and over time it gets too warm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so suppose I've got to put a load of these in a, in a big multi-storey office block, and then it comes around to me doing my EICRs later on in the year. I've got to go in and check it all again. For a spark, so if I've got to do insulation resistance testing, and I've got all these electronics on it, have I got to go and dis- really disconnect every single one of these to... Otherwise, I'm going to spend in ages, isn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say yes, but the an- the answer is actually no. You don't have to disconnect them, if I, if I may. Yes. What, what you do is you you loosen this very slightly, so yep. you loosen it from the from the trunking and from the wall. Yeah. And you've got this little red switch on the back. So what this does is it isolates the electronics within the circuit, so you can treat it like a, a normal electromechanical switch at that point. <laughs> wow. That so if you were doing installation uh, insulation 
testing Insula- at yep. 500 volts. Yep. They could be connected but just deactivated? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's what we want, isn't it? That's the bit of kit. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely yeah. superb. And now, you're, so commercially you're fitting these. I mean, I, I just want to put them in my kid's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Go to bed. Stop playing on that. <laughs> but commercially, mm-hmm. and so these are, they're out now, they're available. Uh, you've done some um, projects with these. Yep. Is data around for people to look at if they want to get hold of the information? Where can they Where can they get to to find out all about this? Well, we've got a dedicated website that I'm sure we can we can uh, furnish you with. Yes, that, that can we, we'll put that in the links. Yeah, yeah we put yeah, that in the links, we'll the links. do that. And obviously, we've got literature there that's sitting on the desk, which oh, gives right. an indication of uh, one of the test sites that we've done. Yeah. But please contact us, and we can give you, you know, the information that the customer wants. Yeah, yeah. So are these done really on project basis? So would you work with the installer or some of our clients to make sure that these are installed and, and they're working how they should be? Yep, ab- absolutely. It's a normal socket, but it's not a normal socket. Oh, so yeah, there's yeah. a number of stages that we would need to go through. So e- each installation is unique. Each installation op- operates different hours. They have different equipment yes, in they there. Do, yeah. And they, they've all got different objectives. Some want to maximize payback. We've seen payback here of you know less than three years. Some want to wow. maximize their CO2 savings. So maybe they will put in more sockets into the installation and maybe cover some things that use less energy, but they still want to make that saving. And some people want total visibility visibility on their BMS dashboard of exactly what's going on. So we need to work with the end customer. Yeah. Also, that there's one aspect that I'd, I'd like to mention here. Every every hub and every socket has a QR code on the front of it. I saw that. So there's yeah. some stickers on here that have got QR codes. What are they for? So when you're at your building management system, you know, you don't want a list of 5,000 outlets because <laughs> the capability of the system is 5,000 outlets, 2,500 sockets. You don't want sockets right. number one, two, three, four. You want to give them individual identification. Yes. So the QR code enables a, an app, a portable, a portable device to pick up the QR code, pick up the socket location. You can then key into, um, key into a portable app I'll come back to that, but key into a portable app, the location, and all of that is uploaded into your system. Through early customer testing, we understood that that was a little bit fiddly. So what we've introduced now at the front stage is you can do that on a spreadsheet. You can update, upload the spreadsheet into the app. Prior to install. Prior to install. Got and this is a job that the electrical contractor, if they want to, can do, or yep. it could be the system integrator. So you get the capability of pinpointing individually what's happening at every single outlet if you choose to do so around your building nice. either individually or as a group or as a whole building this is just absolutely superb isn't it to have something like this is absolutely mm-hmm. amazing and it's, it's all in a socket that goes under a 25 millimeter back box that you could turn off and on it as <laughs> who <well>. knew who <laughs> knew <laughs> well look uh, it, is, it is truly absolutely fascinating as dave said i think the future of sockets when everyone thought it's just going to be a bored old socket you've proved us absolutely wrong and the capability side of it it has to be where the technology goes and you're taking us there. Absolutely. Yeah. So people wanting to know more, they can do, as Neil suggested there. There's lots of information over at MK. We're going to be sharing information with you again, so have a look at some of the links that we're going to provide you with. If you've liked this jolly old podcast, we would love it if you could... What not to like? Why, why would you not? Tell people, shout from the rooftops, and also hit the subscribe button. That's the good bit about it. That Spread the love. <laughs> that will really help. Neil, thank you very much for coming. Pleasure to be us. here. Thank you. And thank you to listening to another CF Tech Talking podcast.